Enjoy your meeting. Just a reminder, today's meeting is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Discover Your Inner Compass webinar. I'm excited to spend this day, this hour, <laughs> this day, this hour feels so nourishing, it feels like a whole day. I'm excited to spend this hour together and here in Canada, it's fall. Uh, I know some of you are living in different parts of the world, but here it's fall and fall for us um, is a time when the daylight becomes less and less and the darkness grows each and every day has a little more darkness until December. And that is a really wonderful invitation for us to go inward. And as we literally, like a bear going into its cave, turn inward, we have a chance to reflect and digest all that's happened during the year, just like a bear would digest its food as it's hibernating and digest the fat that it stored up. We're digesting the wisdom and um, aligning everything we've learned in our body. And it's a really wonderful opportunity, both fall and winter, to connect with your inner world and get a sense of your inner landscape and what's happening there. So today we're going to have a chance to dip into some of that really interesting stuff, as well as I just want to acknowledge that it is still that full moon energy um, that we experienced is still present today. And that energy was really an invitation to heal and release, but also to believe in yourself and cultivate the love um, for self and a belief in self, whatever your goals may be. And we'll talk a little bit about what your intentions and goals might be during fall winter time and just get you thinking about that because, of course, I guess the last thing I'll say about this season and working with the seasons and harmonizing with the earth through our body and through our daily actions is that we want to be really crystal clear as well going into spring for planting those seeds of intention for manifestation. So this time is a wonderful time to also get clear about what you want, whether it has to do with simply how you want to feel during the day um, in your body. Maybe your goals are oriented towards your finances or career opportunities. Or maybe you want to create. You're an artist and you want to be creating. So it's a wonderful time to get really crystal clear about what it is that you want so you can really bring that into fruition with the season. Before we get started today, let's actually take a moment to go into the body and just notice what's there. So closing your eyes. If you're standing, rooting your feet on the ground. If you're sitting, imagining your seat bones have roots like a tree and uh, really helping you to feel grounded. The full moon was in Taurus, which is an earth sign, and there's a wonderful invitation right now to connect in a really beautiful way to the earth and the earth's energy. So feeling connected and grounded in the present moment, closing your eyes, and firstly, just noticing your breath as you inhale, Witnessing the journey of prana, life force, oxygen, chi, energy as it travels into the body. Notice if your breath travels as deep as your solar plexus. So are you breathing into your chest? Does your breath travel even deeper towards your navel? And quite possibly, as you inhale, your breath is traveling all the way down to your pelvic floor, past your hips, to the base of your torso. And we actually have little muscles that mirror the diaphragm that travel um, all the way down to our pelvic floor. So you can quite literally breathe right to the base of your torso and down into that root chakra if you're familiar with the chakra system. 
as you exhale, noticing where does your body soften? Do your shoulders round in a little more? Maybe your tummy gets quite soft. Maybe you feel your head and neck releasing. <sighs> so listening in now to the body and just noticing what feeling or emotion is present. Perhaps you simply notice there's tightness in some part of your body. And as you do, just witnessing it without judgment. Maybe you notice there's some part of your body that feels really, really relaxed. Maybe your toes feel really, really relaxed. Or maybe your eyelashes feel really, really relaxed. So just kind of doing a little scan and taking a little mental note of, hmm, which parts of my body are feeling tension today? And hmm, what parts of my body are feeling relaxed today? Taking two more breaths as you just observe what's happening in your inner world. I'm noticing personally that my right shoulder is definitely carrying some tension this morning. So I'll have to look into that <laughs> um, during this call because we're going to have the opportunity to. So when you're ready, just opening your eyes if you haven't already. Um, and noticing if that little check-in is leaving you feeling a little more relaxed or a little more present. One of the greatest gifts we can give to ourselves in my beliefs and philosophy is to just take little moments throughout the day to check in. And I'm going to give you a few tips about that in our call today as well. We're also going to talk about how to make clear decisions that you know are leading to your success and happiness. And I can tell you that I have gone against the wisdom of my body on different occasions, and I've made decisions that haven't led to my success or my happiness, as I'm sure we all have. And it's just wonderful proof to me, and I'd love to share some of my learning the hard way with you so that you can pick up on some of the signs and signals that your body is expressing to you. Sometimes we simply don't understand the language of the body or we're kind of in such a rush in go, go, go routine of daily life that we don't necessarily notice um, the signs and signals coming from the body that are going, uh uh, that's not a good idea. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about understanding the unique language of your body and, and discover what it's saying. And so everyone's body wisdom um, is going to speak differently. And the wisdom that's coming from your body is a combination of your higher self, your intuition, um, your soul essence who sees through all the the veils of, of daily life and relationships and computers and all these dynamics that can can create screens or filters or veils for us. They don't have to, but often they do. Um, and the other part of the body wisdom is actually coming from the earth. I have said this many times before, and I'm very passionate about it, and I'll share it with you again, um, is that our body is exactly the same ratio as the earth. So when when we look at some of the minerals and elements that are part of the the um the composition of the earth and then take it back to our own human body we notice the same things and i was really like so inspired and overjoyed when i started to learn about this and realizing that we have the same ratios of iron and silica and all of these different mil minerals that are found in the earth um very closely near the ratio of those minerals and elements in our own body. Um, our tears are the exact same saline uh, 
uh, solution the same ratio of salt to water as the ocean. So our body is created of the elements of the earth. So we are very in tune with the earth if we listen, there's all this wisdom that's constantly um, being transferred through our feet, literally, into the ground and also through our hands, which are receiving a lot of information. We have little chakras in our hands and in our feet, and we actually are receiving information through our hands, and then we also have the power to create and manifest with our hands and heal with our hands and send information through our hands. So the body is so miraculous, so many different things it could do. Um, so the wisdom that I'm talking about tuning into today is both listening to wisdom that's coming to you from the earth. Um, I don't know if you've ever had an insight about weather and it's been like a really, you know, um, clear, sunny day, but then you've had this feeling like there's a storm on its way and a storm comes. Literally, the way animals can sense things before they happen, because they're naturally tuned in with the earth and her cycles, we can do the same. And the more we harmonize with the moon cycles and the seasons, the more we can um, maximize our ability to manifest our dreams, absolutely, for sure. And when we do follow the seasons and the rhythms, we also make sure that we're getting more rest when you know, wherever you live in the world, you kind of harmonize with your country, with your continent, what's happening right where you live. What season is it? Is it the rainy season? Maybe you um, want to be drinking a lot more water during the rainy season. Everything else around you is. Um, I won't get too much more into the connection with the body and the earth today, but only to say that as we nourish our body and take care of ourselves, you're actually doing something wonderful for the earth as well because your body is a little piece piece of, of the earth that you have on loan um, until your spirit leaves your body and then it will be returned, returned to sender. <laughs> um, and so let's begin by uh, just taking a moment to think of any body part, whichever one just first comes into your mind and for me, it's my ear, so whichever body part first comes to mind, when you think of a body part, you're going to roll with that, and you're just going to place your hand there. So maybe it's your lower back, maybe it's your foot, maybe it's your breast, wherever you kind of felt really drawn to go, and you're just going to gently close your eyes and begin to um, explore that body part, like Feel the temperature of your ear or your body part. Is it warm? Is it cool? Notice the contour of this part of the body. Notice the shape. Notice how it feels when it's touched. Is, does it feel um, like it's openly receiving this touch right now? Or does it feel like it's contracting or closing up a little bit from the touch? And so really putting all of your focus right now on this one body part. Noticing its shape. Noticing how it feels today. How does this one specific part of your body feel today? I would say my ear feels very present today. <laughs> um, and now listening and opening up a space for dialogue. And so uh, part of the key of listening to the body is just opening the mind for a message. It could be a word. It could be a color. It could be a feeling that you feel in your body as you connect to this body part. It could be a memory. So just tuning in and listening for a second and just seeing what first pops into your mind as you can, you know, stay very connected to this one body part. OK, 
Okay. So hopefully you've either felt something in your body or seen a color. You don't have to know what it means. This is the very beginning of opening this dialogue up. Maybe you heard a word or words. My, my ear shared with me that I'm a good listener. That was a little affirmation that I got from my ear today, just now. And, um, and I have been told that before. And I think that is an important part of my role as a coach when I work with women. So I'm kind of, um, just feeling warm and fuzzy from getting that little love note from my ear. Um, but maybe you, you know, whatever information or insight you got, just uh, feel free to not understand. We're going to move on, but I just wanted to give us a tangible, another tangible moment to connect with the body and do a little bit of listening still, and I'll continue on through some of the um, tools and techniques I want to share, and then we'll come back to the body part and see what's going on after. So maybe you'll get a little message through that. Um, of course, today we will also do a guided visualization that's about 10 minutes to help connect you to the wise woman within. And many of you probably are already quite connected to um, your body or your intuition and the wisdom inside of you. Um, but oftentimes when we're so busy, we don't stop to listen. And so today we are taking this nourishing hour to do so, and I'm so happy to be here with you to do that myself as well, all together. Um, so I would say the first most important way to hear wisdom held in your body is to stop and listen. So like I just said, when we're going through our schedule, we often don't take the time to stop and listen when we're busy, especially if you have little ones at home and you're like managing the kids and running around. It's like, are you kidding me? Well, here's a little tool that I like to do and I recommend it to the women I work with and I've seen fabulous results is when you pee, and some of you are mothers probably already do this, the washer might be your sanctuary, but when you pee, stop, just close your eyes for a moment instead of allowing your mind to race about what you're going to do when you get out of the washroom or how many things um, you need to do today. When you have that quiet moment to just stop and go pee, closing your eyes, taking a nice deep breath, and asking your body, like, how are you today? Or maybe if you have a question and you're like, I really need some insight about um, this job opportunity that I've been offered. And it seems really good, but I'm not sure. And, like, my thoughts are racing. I'm just, you know what? I, I have to go pee. I'm just going to stop and see what information my body shares with me. So I guess, um, I guess what I have to say and what's important to say is it's not an overnight process to learn the unique language of your body. Um, and it's often through symbols. Some of you will hear words. That's wonderful. Some of you will um, get a feeling like if you, so your eyes are closed, you're taking a moment to pee and you say to your body, you know, how would you feel if I said yes to this opportunity? And you feel, um, you know, tightening in your stomach and your shoulders tighten and you feel really drained or really exhausted. You go, oh, okay. Um, how would you feel if I say no to this opportunity? And suddenly your body relaxes and feels expansive. And so part of starting to listen and learn the symbols is also trusting. And I will talk about... Um, uh, partway through our call as well, differentiating between um, fear, because fear also uh, is expressed through feelings in the body. Um, anxiety, fear, doubt, and this, this is very connected to our um, thought patterns. So those of you who notice yourself during the day going, did I just catch myself thinking that I look ugly today or that I look um, you know, old today, or did I just catch myself thinking that I'm a failure or that I'm not going to be successful? So those kind of thought patterns that, you know, it's not 
truly it's not necessarily about getting rid of them. It's about noticing them and then not engaging in them and uh, being the witness and go, huh, some part of me, somewhere in the universe of my body, some part of me thinks that I'm a failure. And hmm, I might have picked that up from society because I'm an artist and our society sees uh, artists as failures. I might have got that as my parents because they saw me as a failure or they felt like they failed me. And okay, some part of me thinks that, I'm witnessing that, and what else do I know to be true? And so when I catch myself, if I'm just having a, a challenging day or a difficult day, and I notice some of these thoughts happening in my body, and then those thoughts actually turn into feelings, and I start feeling, um, you know, the fear or the disappointment or the shame then turns into um, anxiety or vice versa, because it can come through the body and then manifest in thought. Um, again, like I said, stopping to witness and go, oh, okay, you acknowledge. Hmm. Some part of me thinks that, okay, I'm not going to buy into that, but I am going to just notice that some part of me is feeling like that right now. And then I love to tune into my heart or into my lower abdomen, um, you know, sacral chakra, feminine organ place of creation, whether you create children or not, you're creating meals, you're creating ideas. So um, tuning into either one of those places and going, what do I know to be true about myself? And it's like, oh, I have a lot of determination. I'm a hard worker. And so that's another way that you can just engage your body in your daily dialogue, it only takes, you know, 25 seconds max to when you catch yourself in a an energy spin or a thought spin or a feeling that doesn't feel good to stop and acknowledge it and then tune into the wisdom of your body to actually mirror back to you how amazing you are because your body is a library and some of the miraculous uh healings that I've experienced over time with the women I've worked with and I never I don't advertise or tell people hey you're gonna you know if you have chronic body pain I can help you fix that but it ends up being a byproduct often of when I work with women because it we store pain in the places where energy is stuck and energy is usually stuck because of an an experience from our past whether you were a child or another age that you just you weren't able to process at the time and it was painful and it's stuck there and it's literally becoming painful you're feeling physical pain because your body's saying okay like I've held on to this for you for 20 years but it's time to deal with it and if you don't deal with it it's going to turn into an illness um, and so for example with my you know my area that I injured myself even if you have an injury like it's not a coincidence when I had a career in dance that I injured my lower back and um, you know as an artist uh, who was doing well um, but still was a struggling artist so I was thriving in my career but the dollar signs weren't necessarily adding up to make me um, feel really comfortable that I could pay all my bills every month and so that area of the body is the sacral chakra where those fears uh, connected to relationships are. So often if you have, um, you know, fear in your relationship with money, fear in your relationship with your partner or, you know, whatever those fears are, they will often manifest as uh, pain in the lower back or irregular menstrual cycle. And I've helped many women um, with their menstrual cycle to regulate it through this deep listening work to the womb space and to those feminine organs in the body who actually have a lot to say. And I won't go into the science of it today, but I will say that um, there's a lot of new science that proves that as women, our, our brain is very connected to our pelvic nerve, which connects to our vagina and our our sex organs and our reproductive organs and there are brain cells in your womb and this your cycle of thinking actually um, is really connected to your lower abdomen and that part of your body um, which is very different from men that is not 
it's not the same thinking process that's going, um, you know, that's active in all of your different realms of thinking as a woman different from men. There are certain areas that, yes, of course, are directly linked to men and they have a thought and it's, you know, obvious, wow, okay, um, they're aroused now and that thought was an instant. But all of our thinking, all of our thought processes intimately connected with that part of our body. So again, very interesting just to um, realize how we think as women and how much um, wisdom is stored in our lower abdomen, in that sacral chakra area of the body, and also the root chakra. And um, a lot of us have who have fallen in love with African dance um, and West African dance, particularly for me, I love in West African dance the way you move your hips and circle your hips and what that ignites in me. And many women are, have fallen in love with Zumba, which is also um, igniting that energy in the root sacral chakra through dance and through movement. And so um, I have a lot more to say about that, but I talked about it in my Wild Woman Medicine online course. Um, but yeah, there's a, I'll recommend a book. How's that? The book called Vagina by Naomi Wolf is a wonderful read to understand the science of how your brain and your pelvic nerve are connected and how intimately um, your joy, your motivation is connected to that part of your body. And so for those of us who have experienced pain, um, trauma, even illness in that part of the body can really impact your ability to experience joy on a day-to-day -day basis. And so part of my journey um, with healing through uh, sexual assault as a youth was to, um, well, was through movement, which I was very blessed to be able to be in movement classes to help shift and move that energy and then continue the work as I was older. So um, if you have had an experience that, and maybe it's just like, yeah, it happened, I'm over it, or yeah, you know, that was when I was really young, or whatever it is, if you notice you're having irregular menses and if you notice you're having trouble um, being, you know, achieving success or achieving happiness or whatever it is, there is a healing and a listening that needs to happen and it doesn't have to happen through therapy. Absolutely not. It can happen just through witnessing um, and beginning to deeply listen to that area of your body and just checking in and saying, hey, how are you doing? Um, because often that place is numb. So that was a bit of a tangent um, that was not planned, but that usually happens anyway when I get going. Um, and that's the case with any part of your body. So there may be some part of your body that feels almost numb, and it's like, okay, it's really time to to tune into that story and listen to what's happened there because I can barely, you know, I'm losing finger and feeling in my fingers or in my toes or um, I'm starting to have a lot of pain in that part of your body. So that's, that's just a great place to go when you start having, um, or even one day if you just have like a, a stabbing pain somewhere in your body, maybe in your back, behind a shoulder blade, or maybe um, in your chest, in your lungs, it doesn't have to be an alarm. It's like, oh, okay, my body is speaking to me today. I am going to go sit down, close my eyes, place a hand on that body part, and firstly, I'm going to say, I hear you. I am right here, and I hear you. I'm listening. Um, for me personally, because of the injury that I had in dance, my lower back is one area that will speak to me. And if I'm not taking the proper time for myself, for self-care, then I will feel pain in my lower back, guaranteed. And that's kind of my body going, hello, you're not in balance right now. You're doing too much and you're not getting enough rest or you're not stretching enough and you're sitting too much on your computer. <laughs> so I noticed that the, when I, okay, I'm starting to feel pain in my back, I'm going to stand up. I place a hand on my lower back and I just say, I hear you. I totally get that I have 
been sitting for way too long today. I'm sorry. I send a breath into that part of the body and immediately, every single time, the pain decreases. And so that's a little tip for you if you are experiencing pain. Um, stop and listen. Stop and acknowledge. Stop and connect to that part of the body. And I would say nine times out of ten, the pain will decrease at least a little bit after that, if not significantly. Um, so that's that's all the richness involved in in beginning to listen to your body is really – some of these energetic walls, because they are walls that have gone up in different parts of your body, um, are blocking your connection to your own light, to your own power. So it's almost like um, uh, it's almost like you're shutting yourself in a house, trying to create light with flashlights and candles in the middle of a field that's full of sunshine. So for those of us who we feel the fear and we like shy away from it, we don't want to feel it, we turn away from it, um, or that experience or that fight we had with our partner or disagreement or that thing that we can't forgive someone for, instead of walking towards the fear or the discomfort in your body, which, you know, I am someone who grew up experiencing a lot of anxiety and I still have my moments even today, and I've worked on it for like literally 15 years actively, and I have all these tools in place that support me to feel a sense of ease and flow in my daily life, um, but I still have days where I wake up and go, whoa, I feel like anxiety is like off the charts today, like what's going on? And instead of just trying to like, oh, well, what will make me you know, forget about it or feel better or I'm just going to, like, start working and just dive into my work. Um, actually allowing myself to feel it, and this is what I do. I stop and I just take a breath and acknowledge, wow, I feel a lot of, um, and I don't even like to use the word anxiety because it feels so loaded with heaviness, but just notice, wow, I feel really uncomfortable in my stomach and it feels like there's a drummer playing a really fast rhythm and maybe some like really screechy guitar solos. <laughs> like it's just like dissonance happening in there. Um, and so the beauty of walking towards the discomfort that you're feeling or experiencing is that when you acknowledge it, like often it's on its way up and out. Um, so it's been locked and stored away in your body and something that you've done, whether it's your inner work or whether it's someone from your past who you ran into or something someone said to you has triggered it and now it's being released, which is thank goodness because all of these old stories that get stuck in the body and start to create shut doors and walls that um, we don't want to touch these walls or these old stories because they're painful. So we kind of start getting close in. Um, and so when you actually are able to hold space with the feeling and not get entangled in it, so, you know, going back to the, the uh, example of anxiety, okay, I'm feeling this really fast rhythm in my stomach. It feels a bit like a tight knot. I'm just going to keep breathing deeply. I'm going to tune into my belly and ask, like, what's going on here? Is there a fear? Is there something happening that's really upset you? And, you know, maybe you'll get some insight or maybe it's just like something's passing through you and it's coming up and out. So when you're able to start facing the pain and the discomfort you're experiencing in your body, then you can release it. And it's awesome because then it's like if you're familiar with Tai Chi or moving energy in the body or yoga, then, you're, then your energy can flow powerfully through your body and it's not getting stopped and blocked in different areas. So many of you have probably experienced some discomfort since the eclipse and now the full moon because a lot of fears are coming up and it's really just like an emotional, mental soul detox where you're just getting to release these things and be freer and lighter and happier for it. So as you do, then it's like going back to this metaphor of being in the house um, 
which I, I just read that metaphor from a book called The Untethered Soul, which is a fabulous book, but it's the same metaphor as Plato and Socrates, where you're, you're living in this cave and you think that the cave is the world, but then you step out into the light. And that's what happens when you start listening deeply to your body and start being like cultivating your ability to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You, um, begin to connect more and more to your own light, to your own power, and things that would have really, like, sunk your ship before just rock your boat. And you're like, meh, you know, that person doesn't like me. Oh, well. Um, and so there's a lot of joy and happiness that For those listening to the recording, Alicia's audio had a technical difficulty. She is repairing it, and we will resume our webinar in just a moment. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. I tried to say no to a phone call, and I ended up hanging up on us, which is not what I meant to do. I just didn't want to hear any beeping, beeping through here. Um, so we are getting close to the end of our call, and I want to summarize with a couple things. Um, I know I've talked a lot about the body and how we can release and what is um, available when we do. I want to give you a little, uh, a couple ideas about how to um, understand some of the most basic ways your body is speaking to you. Um, here's a few really basic ways your body speaks to, to you when it comes uh, to food. Often, if you're craving uh, salt, and you're someone who craves salt, your body's actually asking for more minerals, and you're deficient in some mineral some way. And salt, traditionally, historically, was full of minerals. So if you have that craving, you would want to check into what um, minerals you might be deficient in, and if you're going to eat salt, eat really good quality salt, sea salt or Himalayan sea salt or whatever it is. Um, another one, if you're craving sugar, your body's craving energy. So actually a green smoothie or a big salad is what your body's really asking for, but it shows up in terms of a craving for sugar. Um, now, distinguishing between feelings created by fear or by impulse, that's uh, something we want to differentiate because many of you have experienced your intuition and you know you just have a bad feeling about something and then you don't know why but you feel it. Um, here's a way to distinguish impulse. When you're making a decision and it's kind of an impulsive decision, let's say for example if you're shopping and you need to make this decision and um, do I want this? Do I need this? Whatever. Do you, listen, do you have a pit in your stomach? The more you try to talk yourself into it, do you start to feel ill? Um, or does it make you feel open and expansive and like, yeah, I feel totally relaxed when I think of buying this iPad and I think it's going to help my business and it feels, my body feels very relaxed. So the most basic language that your body will speak is through excitement or repulsion. So that's the most basic, and I'm sure you've felt both in the dating world where your body goes, yes, 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 and then no, no, no. Um, so you, and which is different from impulse, and this is, I'm not talking if you're drinking, because <laughs> if you've been drinking, I'm not going to tell you to follow what your body's wisdom is saying, because now you're listening to your, like, primal 
wisdom if you've you know really had a few drinks this is not the time to be tuning into the wisdom of your body um although i will say that i was in california a couple years ago and i met this guy and he was totally awesome and we had spent the whole day together on the beach and then he took me out for a beautiful dinner and i was like uh you know i might have had one or two drinks and i was like okay like i think we might go home together i'm gonna check I'm going to the washroom and I'm going to go ask my body, like, is this okay? And um, and really listening for that yes or no. I like to do the body pendulum. And so you can close your eyes. And if you want to right now experience that, you can actually just close your eyes for a moment and stand up. And you can ask your body, once you're standing, your feet, are firmly planted on the floor and you have your knees bent slightly, um, you stand up and you say, uh, okay, what is my yes? Show me my yes. And your body will, in most cases, move very slightly in one way. Okay, what is my no? Maybe you feel your body leans back for your no. Maybe it leans to the other side for your no. So there's going to be two very distinct movements for your yes and for your no. And that I use that all the time. And I don't, I, I feel like it's my go-to and I think you have to practice with it. I'm not going to tell you to buy a house using that right now, but practice with it and start making small decisions with it until you are really hearing the truth of your body who is aligned with your highest self with your soul essence who is also aligned with the earth and the earth is a very wise um very creative um very sensual very beautiful being and she's got so much to say to you as well through your very own body so we're going now just to do a very uh brief kind of five minute guided visualization um I, I want to acknowledge all the parents out there, and I would say that you have listened to your body's wisdom many, many times as parents, um, because when it comes to your own children, your body will speak as loud as it can. And sometimes it's like, no, you're not sleeping over tonight at this person's house, and I don't know why, but my body's telling me no. Um, I have this feeling in my body. Or, for example, um, or even if you don't, I don't have children, but, for example, my younger brother a few weeks ago had this terrible migraine and he, he, it was actually quite, quite terrible. I'll just say that he lost feeling in his hands and was losing his vision. And anyway, I just had the feeling in my body that I needed to go to my mom's house. And I was, I did have plans to go there for dinner. Um, but it was three o'clock and I was sitting at my house going, I need to go now. And I'm not sure why, but I'm going to go. And surely enough, I went and my mom was kind of like half, kind of dragging my brother into the house because he's a big guy to help him. And um, and uh, there we go. I arrived just in time to help her with that and to help her support him through that experience. So, um, so much wisdom from the body. So taking a moment now, we're going to do a little tune in with your own wisdom, your own body's wisdom. Closing your eyes. Connecting to your breath and bringing your awareness firstly fully into this present moment. I know I've said a lot. There's a lot of thoughts to digest. There may be things you agree with, things you don't agree with, and that's all fine. But in this moment, we're going to press pause. And just be fully present and imagine that your presence and awareness is like a body of water and it's up in your mind right now. So up in your head. So imagine like a slowly winding river, your attention and your awareness is going to travel down your body and into your heart. So seeing first this beautiful slow moving river and then Slowly bringing your attention further and further down, noticing the temperature of your breath in your nose, in your nasal cavity. Noticing 
as you swallow, bringing your awareness down to the throat. Does your throat feel open and expansive today? Does it feel tight, closed? Or maybe it feels like it has something to say, like there's been something bottled up and there's some some energy that's held there that wants to be expressed. Bringing your awareness down even deeper still, your slow river winding down into the throat. As you inhale, notice if you can feel the breeze of wind, of air traveling into your windpipes, into your lungs, by way of your throat. Can you feel the temperature of the air as it travels down through the throat? Bringing your awareness now to your collarbones. Noticing if they feel aligned. Do they feel like they're on an even plane today? Are they parallel to the ground? Does one feel higher than another? And then bringing the slow river of your awareness curving down into the heart space, filling filling the space of the heart like a beautiful waterfall, filling a gorgeous pool of turquoise water. And just calling on the wise woman in you. She lives inside of you. She speaks through your body. And she has a lot to say. But for today, she has one message of encouragement for you. So opening to call in this woman, visualizing, noticing how old she is. Maybe she's an elder, a grandmother. Calling in the wise woman within and then asking her, what is your message? Notice what she's wearing. If you can see her, if you can't, it's okay too. Notice any words, use your imagination. Notice her energy, her presence. If you can't see her, feel her. When you call on this wisdom, where do you feel it in your body? Now that you've established this connection, And maybe you've heard some words of wisdom or encouragement. Maybe you heard one. Maybe you just heard the word love. You are loved. Or I love you. Asking her now, what is important for me to know at this time? What is important for me to know at this time?
You may notice that there is some gift for you, that this wise woman within has a gift for you. It could be a stone, a crystal, a key, a feather, but she's going to show you an image of it in your mind. You'll see it flash into your awareness, or maybe you'll see her hand it to you personally and place it in your hand. If you're not sure what it's for, asking what is what is this for? So whether or not you received a clear message or not today, it's okay. You're just beginning this dialogue or if you have had a practice, maybe you have left it for a little while and you're just coming back to it. So just feeling, allowing yourself to be at peace with whatever you felt and experienced. Beginning to deepen your breath in the body. And then when you're ready, before you open your eyes, bringing your hand again to that body part you tuned into earlier today. And now listening for a message from that body part or just noticing how you feel now as you tune into it. Beautiful. So beginning to deepen your breath, feeling your body expand as you inhale, opening, softening as you exhale, knowing that when you do open your eyes, they'll feel like they've been bathed in beautiful, crystal clear, cleansing, healing water, feeling warm and present and feeling a little bit more energized from head to toe. And when you're ready, slowly opening your eyes, taking a nice big stretch and smile. Um, so I have uh, had a wonderful time with you here today. Um, and for those of you who have tuned in after the fact, thank you for taking this time as well to connect with your body. I do have an uh, event I'm really excited about coming up. It is in Toronto, so if you live in the Toronto area, um, and this event is all about discovering your inner compass. So there's, I mean, I could talk about this for hours and hours and hours, um, but uh, if you come to this workshop, you'll have a better sense of, of depth and the many unique ways that your body is speaking to you personally. And it's a dance workshop. So we're going to be using movement and um, it's actually happening on November 14th at Dance Makers Studio, which is a beautiful place to dance. No mirrors, spring-fed floors, giant windows. It's going to be a gorgeous afternoon. It's from 1 till 4. And um, during that time, you will have a chance to deepen your connection to your instincts and intuition through West African dance. So I will be teaching a West African dance during that workshop. Um, you'll also experience a guided visualization and learn the next step to your success. So as you go back to your, you know, your homes, yourself, your families tonight, um, and maybe taking some time to reflect on what are my goals for this fall winter. Is it simply that I want to experience more peace or get more rest? Um, but or is it that I want to grow my business? And so um, that guided visualization we do will help you get that clear message from your body on what's next for me. 
You'll also understand the unique language of your body. So I'll be doing a little bit of one-on-one -on -one work to help you hear what it's saying. And that's what I do in my coaching practice. So I've had some years of experience with that. And it's always so wonderful um, to, to create that open space as, as you do when you move stuck energy and listen to the body. Um, there's going to be lots of wonderful, dynamic women in our supportive, warm-hearted circle. And so it's a very safe, non-judgmental space. And you'll learn how to make clear decisions about your next steps. So I have some more exercises that are uh, much easier to teach when we're in person. And um, the other thing that I want to mention about that is I had originally priced it at $125. And I sat and listened. Something felt off about the workshop. So I sat yesterday and listened. And I'm like, am I still meant to do this? Like, I have a funny feeling. What's going on? And I listened to my body's wisdom. And my body was showing me 50. It's like $50. Like, you need to, yes, you need to run it. Yes, it's still a go. But you need to make this accessible to a lot more women because it's, what we need to do on the earth plane right now is integrate the wisdom that we have in our body, that we have, um, you know, our our unique gifts and abilities that we haven't even tapped into yet, that we don't even know we have. And it's all in that encoded information. And um, anyway, so many gifts, so many gifts from dancing into the body and listening. And uh, so if you feel called to join us, please do. Again, like I said, it's 50 bucks. That's the early bird price. And that includes like refreshments and snacks. And it's going to be a wonderful time. And uh, Tiffany's just going to paste the link to that in the um, chat box. But otherwise, you can go to manifestdance.com under events. And it's the Discovering Your Inner Compass workshop. And it will be a delightful afternoon the day before the Santa Claus parade. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, please email me or, or pop in on the Manifest Dance Facebook page. I wish you a wonderful afternoon and evening and um, all the best. Much, much joy for you in your body and much vitality. Bye-bye.